Hi, this is Connie Lindsay from Crafting a Joyful Life. And I want to share some tips with you today and talk to you about making framed inchy art. You might have never heard of this, but um, it takes its name from the fact that the little pieces are just inches large. And you can put a lot of these, these are nine of these, together to form a collage of sorts and uh, it makes a nice art piece that you can hang be a great gift to give someone and the cool thing is you can do seasonal ones so that you have a little touch of your own crafting there for your enjoyment in your craft room um, well, let me start by just showing you this is one that I made from very little well actually no yeah almost no stamping um, I stamped this little heart, but these are um, cards from the Petal Passions uh, Memories and More that's available in the um, Occasions catalog right now that's live through May 31st. So I actually just cut these into different little shapes and put mats on them and um, that, you know, that was not as labor intensive because I didn't have the stamping. This is one that I made for um, Valentine's Day, specifically a Valentine one. And you can see that I went into a lot more detail on these. I actually stamped each one of these images. Um, the only ones that I didn't do stamping on um, are on the bottom row. And this is one of those little cards from um, the Petals and More. This is a card that I cut down from the Celebration um, Sweet Soiree uh, card pack. And this is designer series paper um, that I just um, die cut out. And then this is a stamped image here. So you can see that it's fun to add little embellishments. This is the, um, the fuzzy ribbon out of the Occasions catalog. So, um, you can see a, a wide variety of stamps. And uh, one of the things that's so fun that I like is um, you can try new techniques. For instance, um, I have been practicing up on my embossing and so I just had this one little bit to emboss and you know if it hadn't turned out right it wouldn't have been much for me just to discard that one and stamp another heart and emboss it so it's a fun way to try new techniques and this is the one that I just made recently I finished it up yesterday as a matter of fact and this was my most labor-intensive effort um, and uh, I'm really proud of it and you can see that I Put the little silver thread embellishment behind that and put the little uh, dots that are in the daffodil delight on the little uh, doily that I put behind the the uh, circle there and you can see um, that I used a circle of the daffodil delight so that it would show up and if the camera is picking it up you can see the little dots that are the marina mist and the old olive and the daffodil delight and so these just really were uh, great spring colors that inspired me for a color scheme um, and which you don't always have to stick to sometimes it's nice to break out and have a little bit different color it's more interesting to the eye but you may not have seen this paper before but if you watch my video you have because this is the paper that I used to make the gift bags that I did on one of my earlier videos and as I was doing that I thought oh this is so fresh and, and spring-like let me just walk you through real quickly um, about my process of making the the inchy art with just some some little squares to give me kind of an idea because you don't want to you know you don't want to stamp too much so that you it won't fit on your um, your inchy and then I cut mats to go with it and I again I, I use the color scheme 
um, on that last one of the Marina Mist and the Old Olive. And so um, you, you'll notice, let me get this back here, that this is larger than the finished product. Um, because I, I originally thought I would make them this large, but um, in playing with it, it was, it's just kind of an organic process with me. It's, uh, I don't have a recipe ahead of time. I just have a rough idea of what I want to do. And so I started with them a little larger, and then, um, and then I stamped um, on them, and then I uh, cut them out. Once I had stamped the the image, and this is the um, this is a great real uh, multi-purpose stamp set. It's awesomely artistic, and it's in the annual catalog. And um, I use this little uh, dotted scattered dots, and you can see that I use the flowers from it, and also the the fern and the um, the dragonfly is from that same set. So this one set gave me uh, two of my squares and gave me the the uh, dots, the you know, to make the little spots on there. You notice that I I fussy cut out the little images and. You know, if you like to do that, which I do, it's you know it's fun to see the little things emerging from the paper, and it puts a lot more interest to have that three-dimensional. And with the shadow box frames they have now at the craft stores, um, it's really nice because it um, allows you to have that depth without pressing in uh, the glass on top of them. And so this is the stitched square framelit, and um, this is the largest of the squares. And so once I had stamped on the the uh, cardstock with my two different stamps, then I just ran it through the big shot, and it came out with this nice little stitched image. And once I decided on this size. And it kind of depends on the size of your images. Um, on the one that I did, um, you can see I, I had my pieces much bigger on this because some of my objects were very much larger than these little pieces here. And so I, I decided I needed to push it down. And it gave me more room to have this nice space that shows off the dots and pulls it all together as far as the colors. And so I, I made that choice to do that. Um, and another thing that I did, this is my first one, and you notice it's, it's pretty cookie cutter. Every square is the same size with the black mat underneath. I did alternate the two colors, but it, it's very uniform um, in its appearance. And then the second one that I made with the with the Petal Passion cards, I was having a hard time because first of all, the cards are not the this, this square size. And then I thought, well, what's wrong with that? I, you know, I, I need to branch out. And so I did some more, um, I tried to be more artistic with this one. And I have, so I have the long rectangle standing there and then it just mounted them in different ways. And, and um, this paper is also in the Occasions catalog. And it's a it's a foil paper, and it's just gorgeous, and uh, so it made um, it just makes the the black pop out and the the images, and so this has a really different look. And notice I did use the gold cord again around the little birds, and I again this is a card, and I just cut them out and cut out the little heart and mounted that on top, and so. Um, so that this has different sizes. I, I kept it all the same as far as the squares because the little images are so busy that I didn't feel like um, I needed to alter the sizes any other than the circle. And um, I almost didn't use this, but I love this wreath. This is a uh, great stamp and it says uh, your fabulous work of art. And I just, I love that idea. 
Um, most of us don't think highly of ourselves enough and we don't give ourselves enough credit. And so um, it's nice to see that because we are, we're all a fabulous work of art. So this one um, is also has a lot more dimension to it, you can see. So I played with that more. The, the Daffodil Delight, the bottom mat is adhered with little strips of fast fuse adhesive and then I mounted the the uh, <clears throat> cardstock onto the blue um, mats and I just when I figure out I, I get the size I want of the first one and then I just kind of move it around and then I measure okay I wonder how long that would be if it were just about that wide and so it's just it's a growing process um, it's not like I, like I say, I have a recipe right up front. And so I was trying to pull out all the colors. And of course the, the green, the olive, old olive fern. And then the yellow, the daffodil delight for the matte. And then the blue, the marina mist cardstock for that. And so with all these little various pieces, I felt like having the uniform look that way um, would help. Another thing I want to point out is, uh, do you see I left more of a margin at the bottom than I did, for instance, on this one. So it's all of the margins are consistent all the way around on this one and on this first one that I made That's um, that was the Valentine one. So just spaced it real evenly. And I'll tell you, I was kind of surprised. Uh, it's a little trickier to do that than I thought. I mean, how hard can it be? You just stick them down. Uh, but I ended up um, making myself a, a little frame to work with. And I did use this even on this last one to kind of get started and kind of decide, eyeball it. So I allowed 5 eighths of an inch on the outside because you need a little space for the, the uh, edges of the frame. And the shadow box frame that I used does not have, <clears throat> doesn't take up a lot of um, space. Let me get one of the little spacers. So you can see that it's just really, really narrow. So you, you get almost all of your uh, paper in, visible in the frame. So let me put this one right here, as you can see. But as far as good design, um, I felt like it was nice to have this larger space at the bottom and then less at the top. And then, um, so I just, again, played around with it and uh, until I found what I wanted. So I would just like to inspire you to, to try this. It's fun. What I've done is I've, you know, I had the winter doldrums, so I just pulled out all my flower stamps and thought, you know, spring is coming eventually. Hurry, hurry. So I, I just made spring on my, on my little art inchy squares. And uh, so it, it was just a whole lot of fun. And uh, I tell you, I have more detail about this particular um, inchy art over on my blog at texasschoolmarm.com and um, you can go there and I have listed every single stamp set that I used to make these and uh, a little bit more information about how I did it. If you have questions you can leave a comment underneath the video or uh, the link to the post on my blog is also there in the video description and you can travel over to my blog and see what I've written there and um, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have and of course um, I would also appreciate it if you did choose me as your demonstrator if you order some of these products so thanks for spending a few minutes with me and have a great day